Are you thinking about being an RV owner? Want to see our beautiful country? Want to be part of the RV lifestyle? Do you want to learn more? Are you missing freedom? Do you want to travel? Do you want to explore? Then join us at RV Talk Radio. Proudly sponsored by RV Lock. Hello RV Travel Buddies and welcome to the show. This is a very special show because you've noticed we are giving away an RV lock. We have a drawing coming up and we will explain to you how you can enter to win your own RV lock kit with an extra remote. Stay tuned to the show and we'll tell you how you can enter. We also want to take the time to thank our sponsor, RV Lock, for their wireless and keyless entry systems. Sherry and I have one, and we absolutely love it. Today's show, we get to feature a great interview with a young couple. They're fairly new to the internet. They have a a YouTube channel and a Facebook, and we'll put the links to their site in the description of the show, and they're called Spot the Scots. And uh, I ran into them, oh, about a month or so ago and, and started listening to their stuff. And they're awesome. Nice young couple. I think they're about in their 30s. And they're 100% full-time RVers. And later in the show here, we'll have the interview for them. They were really, really fun to meet and talk to. And they have a lot of great advice for folks that are in their younger ages that want to RV full-time. So the first thing I'd like to uh, talk to you folks about with uh, RV Travel Buddy, RV Travel Quest, which is my wife and I, is we just did a weekend Cascade Loop trip. And if you're not familiar what that is, is in Washington State, you have obviously what we call the west side and the eastern Washington side. And to get there, there's some major highways to do that. And one of the trips to go across the highway to the east side and then go north and then come back again going to the west side is called the Cascade Loop. (laughs) And we did it in two days. And so from our RV park here in uh, Seattle area, we took off Saturday morning. We were just thinking about going to eastern Washington. Well, it turned out to be a lot more. So we just uh, featured a video, and for a two-day trip, it came out to be about a 20-minute video, and I apologize for it being long, but there is just so much to show and so little time. It was a wonderful trip. What really made it special is I never really thought about it, but most people do the Cascade Loop in the summertime or sometimes the springtime to see the flowers and how green everything is, but I'm telling you, do that trip if you're in Washington State in the fall. Oh my goodness, the colors were out of this world. And I don't know if we captured it very well on, on the video, but we did our best we could. Uh, we didn't have the best weather. It did rain the entire weekend, so we had cloudy skies. So, But the colors were just fantastic. We hope everybody enjoyed the video. So the next time you're in Washington State, do consider doing what's called the cascade loop the other thing we've been asking our viewers and listeners to do is when you get an opportunity and and feel like you can afford it we'd like to have you buy one of our cinder stuffed chocolate lab toys and what we'd love to have you do is is while you're traveling in all the unique places you go to put the stuffed animal in the pictures of the unique places you've gone and some of the and, and they could be funny or serious whatever you like but and then we invite you to post it on our Facebook and also you can post it on any of our group community sites our uh, RV talk radio has got their own group site which we're going to tell you more about here uh, later in the show and as the pictures come in if we get some really cool ones we'll also make little collages or videos with cinder the uh, the stuffed chocolate lab and all the different places in the united states and canada and then if you want to get one overseas 
we, we it'd be a lot of fun. So we kind of think it would be a fun activity for everybody. Buying the stuffed dog, we have it on sale right now for nineteen ninety five plus shipping, and the proceeds go to RV Travel Quest for basically <laughs> operations. And it goes to a good cause, and it's not going to be wasted money. It goes towards equipment and helping us do the podcast and everything. So it's kind of like sponsoring us. So it's fun. You, you, uh, we don't mind you advertising your sites or you, if you have a website or a, a channel or something you want to advertise with your picture when you post them to our Facebook. We're totally happy with that. Our job is to help people find you. And the resources that you have to show how RVing is just fun. So if you get a chance, in our description, there should be a link that shows a special link that gives you the discount of $19.95. It's normally $25 uh, for the next few weeks. And uh, we hope you have fun with it. And we'll get those shipped out to you as fast as possible. Thanks. Okay, now it's time to tell you how to enter to win an RV lock. It's pretty simple. What we want you to do is go and we're going to use your Facebook. In your Facebook, go to the search area and type in RV Talk Radio. When you do that, our new, which is a brand new community, group community page will show up. What we'd like to have you do is join our community which we'd love to have you. When you do, please, the first thing I want you to do, and if you're already in our community, you're already entered to win, just write in the comments, I'd like to enter into the free RV lock drawing. What we'll do is we'll take all the names to the new community in the next two weeks, and we'll assign them a number, and then we have a piece of software that does a random number generator, and we'll just run that software and that's how we're going to pick the name so all the new and current members of rv talk radio's community facebook page or group page and you you'll have to join um and be patient uh, it takes us a few hours to realize that you're waiting for us to accept you we will not leave anybody hanging i promise and when you get in there, please put your uh, a comment in there that you like to enter for the free RV lock. And please feel free to tell us about you, what you have for an RV, or what your future plans are to get an RV. Uh, just remember that the RV lock only fits on fifth wheels, trailers, and campers is my understanding. And even if you have a motorhome and you have friends with a fifth wheel or trailer, it will make a great Christmas gift. So, folks, don't hesitate. Go to Facebook, type in RV Talk Radio, join our community, put in there, I'd like to join or like to be submitted for the drawing. Tell us a little bit about you, and you're in the drawing with all the folks that are in the community. So, go join today. Now it's time to get our featured interview with Spot the Scots. They are a younger couple. They're in their 30s. They are full-timers. They were wonderful to interview, and I urge you to listen to the whole interview. They have a lot of great advice. So RVing is not just for folks that are retiring. It's for all ages, and they will tell you how they did it and how they maintain it. And they're also going to tell you about a big surprise that they have coming. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and here's our interview. Hi, I'm Rob from RV Talk Radio. And today we have a younger couple that has been traveling for quite a while. Their name is Brian and Christy Scott. And their site and channel is called Spot the Scots. Did I get that right? Yeah, indeed. Yes. Oh, it's really nice to have you guys. Um, the first thing I got to ask you guys <laughs> is, how old are you guys? Oh uh, well, uh, I am the ripe old age of thirty-three, and I'm thirty-two. 
Nice. And how for, uh, how long have you guys been uh, RVing? Well, we've been RVing all together about a year. Yeah, about a year, but we kicked off on our little full-time, if you will, um, here in July. Oh, nice. So you're still kind of kind of new at it. Yeah. Yeah, kind of new. Um, we kind of jumped in feet first with, um, you know, during the summer, we jumped into five weeks straight with nice. um, my kids and uh, kind of got our feet wet pretty quickly there. And yeah, we went 10,000 miles in just five weeks yeah. all over the place. So where are you guys originally from? We hail from the wonderful state of Colorado. Colorado. Nice, and you and you you want to leave that that nice state? <laughs> Not really, but there's so many beautiful places to see. Um, it, it is a little hard missing home, missing the actual state of Colorado. Um, but we try to go back quite a bit and visit family. So um, you know, there's just so much other other stuff we want to see that it's worth it. So but we do find ourselves coming back quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, we actually we're, it's kind of magnetic that way, but. So what kind of RV are you guys using? Uh, right now we have a uh, Sunset Trail made by Crossroads. Um, 2008. It's, uh, 2008. It's 32 feet long. It's got uh, what, one slide out. And, uh, it's a bunkhouse. It's a bunkhouse edition. Yep, it's got two bunks in the back for the kiddos. Okay, so I'm going to be a little silly here. Is it a fifth wheel or a trailer? Oh, this is a travel trailer. Sorry. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, no problem. Because uh, there's so many names out there. It's like, oh, I better make sure and find out. But so you guys have a um, a, a trailer, and what kind of rig are you pulling yeah. it with? We have a 2005 GMC Sierra 2500 HD Duramax diesel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Did I get it all? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you've taught Brian everything he knows about his truck. <laughs> <laughs> no, quite the other way around. <laughs> so, so at your guys' age, why did you guys decide to start being RVers? Um, well, that's a good question. That's our favorite that's question. Our favorite question. <laughs> uh, basically, we we you know got tired of living the you know the average American dream of you know working nine to five to come home to a big house that you have to pay lots of money for that you're never in. Um, no time to spend with each other. Um, or when his kids were around a lot more with us before they moved away, um, you know, we wanted time with them too. Uh -huh. um, time with future kids we plan to have. It just doesn't make sense to us that people spend so much time working to afford all those things and take care of their family, but then you have no time with that family or any time to enjoy the things that you're affording. Yeah. Um, and so we just decided we wanted something a little bit different for ourselves. Yeah, we uh, especially didn't want to put off um, all the traveling lifestyle until after we retired because, you know, anything can happen in between now and retirement age. I mean, we are young, and uh, why waste so many years and on, a, on a maybe, on a chance that we might be well enough to do this when we're retired? Yeah, we come from a little bit different situation um, because my mom passed away fairly young um, from a degenerative spine condition mm -hmm. um, that caused her a lot of problems, and I unfortunately have the same condition, mm. and we just kind of know that our days are numbered, and I mean, everybody knows that on some level, but we have a little bit more reality with that. It just makes us really appreciate everything we're able to do now, and, you know, think about the fact that putting it off for 20 years may very well mean never getting to do it. Yeah. Um, she was not in the best health as she aged, and, you know, I don't know what might be coming my way. So um, I've actually lost both my parents at a pretty young age, and it's just like they waited and waited and hoped to do exactly this someday. They actually had an RV as well. And so we just decided let's do it now. We're healthy. We're together. Um, we have all this wonderful time we can spend together if we so choose, and we were in kind of a building phase of our life. Um, we were trying to figure out careers, um, you know, trying to do different things here and there. And I think that's why it really surprised people yeah. <laughs> what we were doing um, because they thought, well, how can you afford it? Or why are you doing this now when you don't even know what you're doing? And for us, it just made sense. Well, if we're figuring everything out that way, why not kind of go for our dream? And it's a cheaper way to live and all of that. Um and we're going to figure out careers. Why get into a different career and then 
wake up in 10 years and go, well, how do I make this mobile? Yeah. Instead, we just decided we would figure it out for what we wanted, which was to be mobile. So that's kind of what we've done. Now, do you guys have a base, like a, um, like, um, a home place that you go to, or are you totally full-time? We are, we are totally, yeah. utterly full-time. Completely full-time. No sticks and bricks house for us. Oh, great. Okay. Um, so you said in, did you say five weeks or five months that you guys did 10,000 miles? Five weeks. Oh, no, it was five weeks. Oh. That was no mistake. <laughs> I had to make sure I heard that right. So, so um, in 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 the five weeks that you did your traveling, uh, can you kind of briefly say what states you hit? Um, yeah. So basically, uh, started in Denver, Colorado. I drove to Montana and Missoula to pick up my children. Uh-huh. Um, from Missoula, we drove out to the Oregon coast. Then a week on the Oregon coast, uh, uh, Newport. beautiful. Um, and then we headed south on I five, and we did uh, Crater Lake National Park, and we hit the uh, redwoods, uh-huh. and we hit Yosemite, Kings Canyon, and Sequoia, and then we came down the southerly route into Arizona, and we hit um, the Grand Canyon, and then we headed up through Albuquerque, back through Colorado, and hit uh, Yellowstone before taking the kids back to Missoula. Wow. So I got I got to ask uh, of all of all the the Western whirlwind tour. (laughs) So all all the states that you've been to so far, which one's been your favorite? Oregon. Oregon. I would have to say Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, I think it it really holds a special place in our hearts. We went there twice. Well, we've he's been there previously. He's even lived there for a time. But together with our RV, we went there on our honeymoon, and then we went there again with the kids this summer. A total of like two weeks between the two times, but yet it just kind of feels like home too when we see pictures of it. Mm-hmm. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place. So, um, so now that you've kind of hit a cup, I, I'm sh- I, I got tons of questions for you here. So, when you travel, do you guys uh, like RV parks, or do you try to do RV parks and a little bit of boondocking, or what? What's your style? Well, right now. Right now in our current situation, we don't really feel that comfortable boondocking. Um, our trailer isn't hooked up for solar. I mean, I have a small generator that we can run, you know, the fans on and whatnot, but uh, we haven't really done that much boondocking. No, we've only done, like, the Walmart boondocking for yeah. a night here and there, but uh-huh. boondocking is high on our list of things we want to do in the future when we have a little bit better setup because we love being out in nature. But right now we're kind of bound to mostly RV parts. Yeah. So, so you guys uh, tend to use RV parks um, uh, on a regular basis, then, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Okay, so I got to ask: when you guys go to an RV park, what are some of the things that you look for that make it a, a, a RV park that you prefer? Prefer uh, very nice, clean restrooms and amenities because we don't really use the bathroom in our trailer very much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, big space between you and your neighbor is possible. We're in, we're in Houston in the city right now, so it's not that spacious, but we're at least in a really nice, new, clean place. Yeah. Um, friendly management is, is important to us, someone that you can, you know, be able to talk to. And, you know, I think uh, one of the big things I look for is the state of the other rig yeah. when we pull in. You know, I really don't like staying in a place where, where it looks like people have lived there for years and <laughs> in old trailers that are now up on, you know, tender blocks with, you know, garbage piling around them. I like yeah. I like a more transient style of, of a uh, RV park where people come and go. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Now, hey, I, uh, I, I got to see one of your last videos. And by the way, the way I met these <laughs> folks is last, um, this year you probably saw that we made a, a, a video about... Um, Pleasant Lake RV Park up in, in Washington State. Well, I was kind of looking around to see if anybody else made one, and lo and behold, I see Spot the Scots. <laughs> and so that, yeah, that's right. that, that was, so it was that's like really fun to. Uh, so I made sure and subscribe, you know, and I urge everybody to subscribe to their channel. They're really fun to watch, and uh, I'll yeah. make su- I'll make sure on our on our description um, to make sure I have all your links to all your different sites. Uh, you guys are on Facebook, right? Yep, we're on Facebook. Uh, I think it's just facebook.com slash Scott. Basically, you can find us everywhere under that name. Yeah. Good. As well as uh, Instagram and YouTube as well. Yep. Nice. Yeah. I mean, 
I definitely found your YouTube and you guys do really good videos and I really uh, I'm I'm not kidding I see a lot of videos and and you probably figure that out but um, I really enjoy folks that do a good presentation and you guys stood out and it was really I couldn't couldn't wait to meet you guys so we're really glad to have you on the show. Wow, well, thank you. <laughs> so Very flattering. I, thank you, Ralph. <laughs> but your last video revealed a big secret and so what's your big secret? Our big secret is we are getting a new fifth wheel. We are getting a brand new Montana. Um, it's the 340BH. It's a high country, and it is awesome. It's beautiful. <laughs> We're so excited. Now, are you guys uh, have doing anything special to it, or are you just going to kind of work with it as as you go? You know, we have been talking about that. It's it's a little more scary when. If you've seen our videos or anyone else who's listening has, you know that the trailer we have now is about the brightest interior you will see anywhere. <laughs> we have all kinds of colors, and, and it's, it's totally our personality. Yeah, but there's really no hold for Yeah, we weren't afraid because it was older, and it, and it looked out of date, and we knew whatever we did, we were going to like it more. Uh -huh. But this one's brand new and shiny and sparkly, and so we're kind of scared to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. Do any decorating in phases? Yeah, well, we'll start with mild stuff like fabrics and well pillows. pillows and curtains and stuff that we hang on the wall. And then later, maybe when like there's stains on things or the walls have gotten stuffed up, then maybe we'll actually look into painting or doing something else. We're kind of afraid right now, but whatever we do, it has to be colorful. We are very colorful people, out, baby. We're extremely colorful. <laughs> so, so, when do you guys take delivery? Do you know? Um, we're actually heading out to Michigan uh, on the 10th of November to yes. pick it up. Yeah, we're driving from Houston all the way up to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And we're going to spend a couple of days there breaking in the trailer, making sure that um, the new fifth wheel hitch and the truck works okay. Good. That I, you know, I know my way around the outside. Uh, we know our way around the inside. Yeah. And make sure that everything's to our liking. And then we're going to um, haul it all the way back down here to Houston for Thanksgiving. Yep. Sweet. Well, that's exciting. I, I, is, is, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't even express how fun it is to get. I don't care if it's new or used. Getting your first, or getting, or getting a fifth wheel or or RV. That's kind of your next step up. It's like, um, it's like getting Christmas all over again. <laughs> well, it's really no different than, than how most people would feel about getting their dream house. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. that's what it is for us. This is where we live, and we're getting our. Well, right now, our dream house. Yes. <laughs> We're so excited. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to love it, I'm telling you. <laughs> the first thing you're going to notice is you're going to have a lot more storage. Oh, yeah. We're really excited about <laughs> that. <laughs> we just finished uh, doing a video. We haven't put it up yet, all about how the small our closet is. And we're going to have a lot of storage space for the kids and the dog. And then we're going to have a lot of storage space for the kids and the dog. And then we're going to have a lot of storage space for the kids and the dog. And then we're going to have a lot of storage space for the kids and the dog. Sweet. Now, now, when you guys travel, do you guys use any um, uh, favorite kind of electronics for navigation or anything that is kind of something you found that uh, helped you out when you're traveling? Uh, you know, we are an iPhone family. Yeah. Um, we both have the iPhone 6 Plus, and we use it for absolutely everything. Um, usually, mine is used as the GPS. Yeah, and what's that app you like so much? Um, I actually use Waze. It's a, it's a really great... Um, navigation app that uh, I actually started using when we lived in Colorado and I was driving for Lyft. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we like that a lot more because it makes sure you don't take the turns on the tollways when you don't want to and it helps you avoid any uh, high traffic areas due to accidents or things like that um, which gets us into a lot of trouble when you're in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't want to get stuck somewhere like that so it's helped us a lot. In a new app that we're actually interested in getting, now that we're getting the fifth wheel, we're going to have a lot more height on our vehicle yeah. and a little bit more length. We're actually going to invest in the Copilot HD Truck Edition. It's an app. Um, I don't know if it's um, solely on Apple through the App Store, but uh, basically it allows you to enter the height of your vehicle, the length, the weight, and uh, as you're traveling, it, it lets you know of any road restrictions so you don't take the wrong way and end up driving your 13-foot fifth wheel underneath a 12-foot overpass. Yes. <laughs> So since since we're talking about electronics a little bit, how do you guys deal with your uh, well? What 
how do you do your videos and how do you handle the internet? Well, we do everything with the iPhone. Um, so we do all of our videos on our iPhone. We recently got something called the Olo Clip, which we started using with our phone, which uh, goes over the camera lens. Uh, it's the four-in-one lens, and it lets us do wide angle, which has allowed us to fit a lot more in, especially in the, inside the trailer when we're filming in a small space. Or when we're filming in the cab of the truck while we drive. Yeah, when we do our little, our little video <laughs> diaries. <laughs> yep. um, so that's a really, really great addition to our videos. Um, and for internet, we either go to Starbucks because we're both pretty much addicts, Anyway, and it yep. gives us a really good excuse to have to go there to get internet. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, or we use our hotspots on our phones uh, if you don't have good enough uh, Wi-Fi where we're staying in the RV park. Yeah, and as you know, most RV parks, they do offer Wi-Fi, but they're Terrible. very good. No. <laughs> so have you, did, have you uh, hit very many areas where internet was non-existent? Only a couple, like this summer, some of the national parks that we would be near, um, there was one place we stayed that had not only no internet, but absolutely no cell signal, so there was really nothing we could do there, even if we had a mobile hotspot. I mean, right. there was just no cell signal, so I'm sure that's a problem for people who do a lot of boondocking, because a lot of times you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. don't really know exactly how we're going to address that, because we do need the internet for work. Otherwise, I think... We'd be perfectly happy to just be off grid. So uh, you actually uh, just stepped into something I was going to ask you about is at your age, of course, is the, the first question people always ask. And um, we uh, you don't have to go into detail, but um, how do you guys uh, finance yourselves or what kind of work do you do? Or do you guys do work camping? We have not done work camping yet. No, we haven't done that yet, but um, we actually do uh, property management. We have vacation rentals. Oh, yes. neat. Oh, gotcha. And uh, it's something I've been doing a few years already, uh, which I was doing before we ever thought about RVing, but it was very easy. Um, I have my properties listed on VRBO and HomeAway, so I just basically started moving my business to be more mobile, taking mobile online payments um, and things like that so that, I can pretty much do everything online, uh -huh. um, but it does mean I need to make sure I can check phone and internet because I have to handle people that are calling in or emailing me. So. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what kind of uh, uh, careers and, and, and um, uh, money-making uh, ideas are out there. So have you run in, in, uh, in, your t in your half a year to a year of traveling, have you ran into any interesting careers, uh, people you've met? I mean, honestly, with the younger generation, it is mostly computer jobs. I, I don't think there's been that many people we've met that are doing work camping. It's usually um, internet jobs, um, stuff that we personally are not qualified to do. We're really not computer genius type of people, um, and the people we've met are either doing jobs that are completely online or they are working with a company where they can work remotely and they just fly to certain work events or meetings that they have to be at, so... That's you know, it. I wish I could say that there's this magic answer, but I really think everyone has to find the right fit for them and just yeah. get creative. Um, you know, I have talked to a few people where I've tried to give them suggestions, and you just have to take whatever talents you have and figure out what kind of mobile applications you can do with them. And there is usually something. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want it bad enough, or we're kind of buddies on Instagram with uh, uh, Old and Adventurous, there's another younger couple, and he likes to say, um, if you want to do something, you'll find a way, and if you don't really want to, you'll find excuses. <laughs> That's true. So, um, uh, I, I'm going to also find, what kind of hobbies do you guys have? Do you have any hobbies that you bring along with you on your RV? Um, personally, I, I love the outdoors. Um, I love backpacking, hiking, um, being outdoors, uh, oddly enough, I love driving. So when we're traveling, <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, one of my big hobbies is Basically, I just driving. Yeah. Everything we do pretty much is his hobby. That's why I just like it's perfect for him. I really enjoy reading, um, shooting. You know, shooting guns is always cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, my hobbies are are pretty much portable. So I'm a knitter and a crocheter. 
I bring that with me, but of course I had to tear away down on my stash. <laughs> uh, um, I, I bring that along, and I, I really like a lot of the other stuff that naturally comes along with what we're doing, which is taking pictures and blogging and kind of doing all the social media stuff and keeping in touch with people. I just love all of that. Yeah, I think uh, one thing that's really important is, uh, you know, we're one of those mushy couples that actually really like to spend time together. Yeah. Um, I tell people that's not supposed to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and if you've seen any of our videos, you can see how ridiculously, you know, in love with each other we are. <laughs> um, but, of course, there are times when, you know, we need our personal time, and I go for a hike, and she, you know, sits at home and knits, or she has to go get some work done at Starbucks. Yeah. But, um, you know, one of the most important things to us is being together, and that's kind of one of our hobbies, is just doing things together as well. It really is. I enjoy the hiking and everything else, being outdoors. We're big national park junkies. I mean, Good. when we know we get to go to a national park we haven't been to, that is like Christmas morning. Yeah. <laughs> we get so excited. Nice. So, <laughs> so what... you know, we love this stuff. So while you guys have been traveling, uh, what is some of, is there any particular issues or challenges that stand out that you can remember in the last six months to a year that you've been traveling? Issues like with RVing or something specific? Uh, pretty much with just being RVers or full-timers. Has anything stood out that's let you go, man, I'm glad we survived that type thing? <laughs> I, I would say just like maintenance stuff, like, it, you know, it's a little bit more complicated than a house. Yep. I mean, both homeowners will tell you something's always breaking, but with the RV, especially an older one, like we've had a we had a really bad tire blowout over spring break. Oh, and I thought it was the end of the world. You oh, my God. I thought my trailer was, like, totaled. But, you know, a simple tire blowout, you know, it, it tore up the fender well. It tore up the wheel bearings and stuff. But we ended up having to get all four tires replaced on the trailer. But it wasn't the end of the world. It's just, you know, that's something we really had to, I had to really realize is that yeah. you know, it's, it's going to happen. You're, Things you're, happen. You're yeah. traveling and Even if you're prepared, you know, you're not going to be able to always prevent those things. And that's kind of what he has to realize is that he didn't do anything wrong. You just can't prevent these things from happening sometimes. And yeah. um, But we've had just a lot of little things breaking. You know, the truck had some problems a couple of times. Um, and I think Really, the biggest problem is that because it's your house on wheels, when something breaks, it's just a lot more inconvenient because if the RV has to go into the shop, then you've got your truck and your animals, your pets, and, and like, what are you going to do? You know, sometimes your house has to go into the shop for two or three days, so it yeah. can just be a little bit more inconvenient when things go wrong. That's really, is like, the biggest challenge that I can think of. Yeah. Um, no, that's also, good information. Also, we really learned you do have to plan ahead sometimes because we will find ourselves with no place to stay occasionally, and we regret not thinking ahead sometimes. <laughs> yep, and then yeah. on the flip side of that, no matter how much we plan, that plan's always going to go down the tube. <laughs> yeah, things change. you got to be very flexible. It's not a lifestyle for type A personalities. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really good information. So uh, uh, that's one of the things we like to put emphasis on is, is there's, for every action is a reaction. So uh, uh, if you choose this lifestyle, there's things, you, uh, new challenges that you probably never had before. And, and sometimes you get bad news and you just got to deal with it. Exactly. So um, um, in, in the short time, that, well, the long travels you've done, but the short time that you've been full timers, has there been anybody that you've met or person or people that you've met in your travels that really stand out that you can remember that you, you you'd like to mention. Uh, uh, Karen. <laughs> yeah, um, we were on our honeymoon, uh -huh. and we had just started looking into Instagram and checking out all these. You know, we had just started thinking about full timing and, and doing this, and um, we we started looking at people on Instagram, and we found these uh, this this one family, and they, they go under the name currently wandering. Uh -huh. And um, we Justin Sam Curran. Justin Sam Curran, and we found out that they were pretty close to where we were going through. It was actually um, outside of Medford, Oregon, at the Valley of the Road State Park. Uh -huh. And we ended up stopping and staying at the same RV park, and we met them. Got to spend an evening with them. Um, Sam was actually out of town for his job. For his he job. was the one that travels a lot for his job. So uh -huh. we got to meet Jess and the three kids that night, and we spent the evening with them and had an absolutely wonderful time. And I think the 
what we got from that was that really solidified our decision in doing this. Um, yeah, they really inspired time because we, we, we felt and we saw that we could do this and have our kids be homeschooled and still have them, you know, lead, you know, lead a normal life and, and be, you know, I, I don't even know how to say it, not, not be those weird kids that, no, their their kids are some of the most wonderful kids we've ever met. They are so worldly and friendly and, and intelligent. Oh yeah. And they're just great, great kids. Um and that family really is a lot of the reason why we're doing what we're doing. We thought, hey, if they can do it, they're around our age, they've got three kids and all of them managed to live in an airstream trailer. Yeah. If they can do it, we can do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, sweet. So I gotta ask a really tough question and here it comes, especially for young folks. Do you, how are you guys dealing with health insurance? Well, so far, um, we still have the same plan we did before, but it is November, so we're about to be uh, figuring out something else, but we hate our health insurance. We, we specifically chose Blue Cross Blue Shield yeah. because it's available nationwide, so that, we, that was factored into our decision, but um, it's very expensive for not really a lot of coverage, so we're still looking into better options. Yeah, we're yeah. stuck in the, uh, the the issue of, you know, having such a, a high deductible to me, and, you know, nothing really happens to us. We're still young, so we're not yeah, yeah. going to that many doctor's visits and, and, and having, you know, constant lab work done or anything like that. And but I do have monthly medications that are very expensive and they're not covered, so we're paying just exorbitant amounts because on top of our premium, I'm also paying for the medication. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's just not good. We're still looking for something better. Um, and we are planning to work with the surrogate next year. So that's something we have to find coverage for as well. So we yeah. have a lot of research. To do. Yeah. Interesting. No. Yeah. You don't have to go too much in detail, but uh, I do know that comes up with folks uh, your age. When you get into the retirement realm, we eventually we have Medicare, but um but yeah, uh, dealing with health insurance um, this day and age is kind of a, a real challenge. I know that. So the other thing, it is. I do have to ask another question. You mentioned it earlier. Do you guys have some pets? What uh, what type of pets do you have? Um, I have a beautiful dog. Her name is Lucy, and she is <laughs> beautiful. Pain in the butt dog. Beautiful pain in the butt dog. She's an American pit bull carrier shepherd mix, wow. and she is the furry love of my life. <laughs> yeah, that was the girl in his life before I came along. Oh. And uh, I came with a cat. Her name is Phoebe. She's just a little, skinny little black cat. Uh, she's 10 years old. Um, but, you know, we are in a very funny situation where he was a dog man and I was a cat person. And now he freaking loves my cat and I love his dog. And <laughs> now I can't keep him away from those little uh windows with the cats in them at the pet store. He wants every cat that he sees now. I do. So, uh, <laughs> have you guys um, um, found any issues or any kind of recommendations or um, things you want to tell our audience uh, that, that help maintain having pets in your RV? Um, I think as a dog owner, make sure that you have a, a social dog, a socially comfortable dog. Um, my dog is not aggressive at all, but she's just socially awkward with other dogs and mm -hmm. she seems to be more dominant of a dog and so it's really hard to have her in a busy um rv, busy park. RV park with other dogs yeah. and i don't you know, personally i don't want you know people to be worried about my dog being portrayed as an aggressive dog right um so i mean that's one of the challenges that i've had to deal with, with lucy um and it's hard because we do like national parks so much and you can't really take your dog there i mean you can have them in the car but you can't take them on any trails or take them anywhere so they have to leave her at home and most of the time you have to stay outside these national parks and they can be very large so I mean it takes you an hour to get there and an hour or two just to get deep into the park and then it's time to turn around and go back home and take care of the dog so that's been one of the issues yeah, yeah. Um, good point. but the only other thing is really like I said when you need repairs because then you've got these animals and nowhere to sleep and you really have to find, like, a pet-friendly hotel or something like that. So yeah. um, it's just all things you have to, to be aware of and think about. Um, so um, now we're get, kind of getting, now you're kind of mobile. I mean, you guys are kind of in one place for now, but what do you guys do for your mail? Oh, well, um, we looked into, uh, we're part of the escapers group, and we looked into their mail service, but, it really turned out to just be a better option for us to 
a PO box at home in Colorado, mm -hmm. um, and it's very near to some friends of ours. And we're fortunate enough that they uh, scan and forward our mail. Nice. And um, it's been very nice so far, uh, but we've also been in one place these last couple of months. So we're, we're not sure how well it's going to work when we start moving around more frequently. It's going to take <laughs> a little bit of timing. A little bit more finagling. Yeah, <laughs> when, we, when we got here... There was some kind of low response to the post office, and I didn't get stuff for, like, two or three weeks. So that worries me a little bit. But we'll do our best to just kind of keep in touch with them. And, and you know, she is. we're trying to get to the point that basically everything can be scanned and we don't have to really have stuff sent on to us. That would be the most ideal way to handle it. Yeah, gotcha. So now that you've been uh, full-timing for about a year now, i got to ask, do you ever miss having a house? No. <laughs> um, not the house as a whole. Um, I miss certain aspects of the kitchen. Yeah, my husband is quite the chef. I so he that. misses having a big kitchen. Uh, but as far as like a house, no. We had, yeah. we had a very large house, which was a lot of upkeep, a uh, big yard with a lot of upkeep. And that's part of what we were talking about, where we just felt like you spend so much time taking care of that. Yeah. So we really don't miss that. I think we miss Colorado, but not so much the house not part. Not so much the house, no. <laughs> Specifically, I miss having a bigger oven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my silly thing is I, I'm the same way. I don't miss our house too much, but I miss one thing is a bathtub. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've heard that a couple times. Yeah, every once in a while, you just want to take a hot bath. And it's like, oh, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but we have seen some fish without the bathtub. That's yeah, true. Have. That's true. But, yeah, my Montana doesn't have a bathtub, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I have heard that they got them. I don't know if we ever even used our bathtub, so I don't miss that one. But yeah, he, yeah. he definitely misses his kitchen. His kitchen. But we have about the best kitchen set up you could hope for in a trailer, so we're doing pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I saw you guys doing some cooking in your videos, so yeah, I saw he's he's got the the knack for that cooking. So it's like I, I can't wait to catch up with you guys so we can have dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I'd love to see you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. So, uh, what are you guys' uh, future plans? Um, you know, I we knew. <laughs> right now, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've been doing lately is, is what I like to call obligatory traveling, um, which is one of the perks of this lifestyle. Um, we had to travel down here to Houston to take care of some family legal business right? Um, after the passing of, of my father-in-law. Um, and, you know, if we if we had still been, been living in a house, this would have been extremely difficult being down here at length. But being that we, you know, we're full-time RVers, it's been uh, a lot easier. Um, yeah, so even though it's kind of, you know, we haven't liked the fact that we had to do this, it's been so much easier because we live in the RV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as far as future plans, though, I think the farthest we've gotten is picking up the, the, the fifth wheel here in November. Um, then going back to Colorado for Christmas. I, I have, I'm fortunate enough to have my kids for Christmas this year. Uh -huh. Yeah, they'll be coming to visit us, and his parents live in Colorado as well. Yes, and then I think we're talking about hitting the... Um, was it the XKB's convergence in January? Maybe we haven't decided. We we had a lot of plans kind of tentatively lined up for our first year, but when my father passed away, it was a week before our departure date, so it really threw a wrench in stuff. And now we're also discussing using a surrogate that lives in Colorado, mm -hmm. where we're from. So everything's kind of up in the air until we find out. Um, what that schedule is going to look like. Do we need to stay kind of close to Colorado, maybe hit some of the places we've been wanting to go in Arizona and Utah and southern Colorado? Um, or we might spend some time up in Montana with my stepkids. Mm -hmm. um, and we have planned another big summer vacation with them next year because we get them for five weeks in the summer. But we learned our lesson not to try to go 10,000 miles next time. So <laughs> um, we'll be flying them to us. And uh, traveling around the Great Lakes next summer with them. Yep. Sweet. Now, I, I, you mentioned something I forgot to ask you earlier, but do you guys have any um, memberships or club memberships that help you uh, save a little money as you're traveling at the RV parks? Um, you know, of course we have Good Sam. You know, uh, we bought our first 
our first RV that we bought was uh, we bought through Camping World. So we got a good fan membership from that. For three years, I think. Um, for three years. Yeah. And I think we're going to keep that just because, you know, everywhere takes a good fan. Yep. We're also part of the uh, escapees. Um, escapers, sorry. Um, that's for the young people. Uh, yeah. That's the young ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think that's it, though. Yeah, we used to have Passport America. But so few parks took it, and the ones that did, we found were not really places we wanted to be too much. So we have just stuck with the good Sam. Um, I'm really interested in what I've seen from the people that have the Thousand Trails membership. Yeah. But I know it's also kind of pricey, and you have to be pretty committed to it. And it's not something we've really finished looking into, but we are interested in that. Yeah, you know? yeah you'd be amazed. Of, we do a lot of interviews, and I thought I'd hear a lot more people saying that they're they had memberships with things like Thousand Trails and some of the other ones. And it's actually not true so far. It's actually been just a few people. So, yeah, I, I don't know what the answer to that is. <laughs> well, Good Sam has been pretty good for us. And usually if a place doesn't take it, um, we can use his uh, military military discount. So we've done pretty well between the two of those. Nice. So if you had a chance to do anything different, uh, since you started uh, being RVers, would you have done anything different from to this point? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think we've we've kind of you know taken the hand as, that, that has been dealt to us um, on pretty much everything that we've done. You know, everybody says buy your buy your third rig first. But I wouldn't uh, have. But I, I I agree with Christy. I mean, our first rig was a. Uh, was a Jayco J Flight 184BH, an 18 foot travel trailer. And we loved it. And we used it on pretty much just our honeymoon, a month long honeymoon. Yeah. And then we made the decision that we wanted to go full time. And then we bought the 32 foot Sunset Trail travel trailer that we're in now. Um, and then we're now, you know, about to go pick up our third rig a year later. <laughs> I mean, if we had been retirees, it might have been different. We might have followed that added to buy your third rig first. But we were trying to be financially responsible at our ages and make sure this lifestyle was going to stick. So we bought something used that we could truly afford full out without borrowing any money. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, yeah, I wish we could have bought something nicer, but we may have made the best of it and made it home. And I'm glad, I, I still think that was a responsible choice. I'm glad that that's what we did. Sounds like and it. living in this first has given us the ability to know what we really want. Yeah, out yeah. of a out of a rig, so that we didn't buy something thinking, oh, we don't need a whole bunk room. We we'll just get the bunks like this, and then if we had bought something brand new and expensive and then changed our minds, that'd be a lot harder. So we kind of you know lived in it and learned what we want. Mm-hmm. So I think I mean I think we've really done things the way that was right for us. I think we've done a good job. I mean uh, I think one of the hardest things for us to do was getting rid of all of our stuff. Yeah, that was hard. Yeah, I'm not talking about the emotional attachment that we had to this stuff. It was the actual um, action the of, of the process of getting rid of all of our crap. It was exhausting, and it took us three or four months yeah. to really do all of that. Yeah, and yeah. we found out just how much crap we had. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. So um, this is your. I'm going to give you a little platform here. So, uh, so if you had a chance. To tell all of your listeners and future listeners, because this will be online for a long time, um, <laughs> what would you tell others that want to become or are just becoming RVers? Um, what kind of uh, recommendations or advice would you give them, whether it's money or whether it's the equipment or just the state of mind? And, 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 and I, uh, of course, staying with a younger couples, because... We, we know how, us old folks, we know how we're going to do it, but how, how what would you tell <laughs> younger folks that want to get into RVing full-time? I think, I would say, just do it. Like, that's really the yeah. best thing I could say because everyone that we talk to is like, they think that there's something special about us that we're able to do it, but there's not. We're not different from anybody else. We just decided it's what we wanted, Mm-hmm. And we made all of our decisions based around that. And if you want to make it work, you can make it work. I know so many people who say they can't do it because they have four kids. But I know so many people with four kids who are doing it. Yeah. Or I can never live in that small space, but you can. Or I have too much stuff. Well, get rid of your stuff. So I think it's just so easy for people to think that even though it looks really cool when someone else is doing it, they could never do it. 
But if you want to do it, you absolutely can, and you shouldn't be afraid. Um, it's actually a far more affordable lifestyle than what most people are living in a home or an apartment, and it gives you so much flexibility. So if you think you would like it, there's really no harm in trying it out. Um, and, you know, even if you can only do it for a short period of your life, a year or two, it is so worth it. Yeah, I would say uh, my biggest uh, biggest piece of advice would be to uh, be flexible. You've got to be flexible. I mean, nothing is going to go as planned. Even if things are going as planned, something's going to mess up. <laughs> and you've got to learn to be flexible because that's what this lifestyle brings is, is constant... Uh, constant changes. You know, really, that's true of life anyway. I think this lifestyle just makes it a little bit more obvious. Yeah. But life requires you to be flexible. You just got to roll with it. Yep. Cool. Well, hey, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap this up, but you guys, um, I knew meeting you, I just watching your videos, that you'd be a couple I'd just love to meet, and I am so glad that you guys uh, uh, responded to uh, interviewing with us. Um, I... I know that your sites and your and your channel are brand new, so we want to urge everybody that's listening to go visit their uh, YouTube channel, go visit their Facebook, like them, subscribe to them. Uh, I'm telling you, the, they do a good job on their reporting, and I know that I talked to them a little bit. I know there's you guys have some future plans of, of doing even more with your uh, your uh, social network stuff and. Um, Definitely. Yeah, so folks, please take the time to go to our description below, and I'll have all the links to all their sites. And I, I, I promise you, you won't be uh, disappointed. These folks are really good people. So I want to thank you very much for uh, interviewing with us on RV Talk Radio, and I want you guys to have a keep those good reports coming and be safe. And, and, and once again, thanks for interviewing with us. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for having us. All right, guys. You take care, and we'll talk to you later. So that was the Scots. They were wonderful to talk to, and I really am grateful that they did the show with us. I urge you to look in our description and go visit their website, their Facebook, G Plus account, and especially go watch their videos. Uh, they do a really good job. And once again, I want to thank everybody for listening to RV Talk Radio. Once again, don't forget to sign up and, and get in the drawing for an RV lock. And the way you do that is go to Facebook, type in RV Talk Radio, look for our community, join our community, uh, put a little comment in there saying, I'd like to be submitted to the drawing for the free RV lock and you're in and that's all there is to it we'd love to see your pictures we'd love to see your stories your articles pictures of your rigs or your dreams of becoming an RVer that's what the site's all about so welcome to the community and I hope you win also don't forget to order your cinder stuffed chocolate lap we'd love to have you take pictures of all your voyages all over the United States Canada and abroad and put cinder in the picture and then post it to our facebook or our communities and when we get enough fo uh, pictures from all you folks we'll make another collage and make a little video out of it so uh order your cinder dog today there's a link below to get a discount uh, at $19.95 plus shipping and that will save you a little bit of money from the original price and go have some fun that concludes our show today. Thank you very much for listening. Please tell folks about us and go visit our websites and go visit our YouTube channel or Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. So from RV Talk Radio, our saying here is, what are you waiting for? Be safe and see you next week. Bye now. Bye.